right, so welcome back. Uh, so we're going to keep talking about variables, but more specifically, we're going to talk about properties. Uh, so properties are, if you've got a class, properties are the best way to keep like the instance variables on that class, right? Uh, so they actually do a couple things. They make getters and setters under the hood. They do the synthesize thing under the hood. Uh, but the way you'll use them and the way you should probably think about them is just as the best way to make instance variables. So I kind of debated about where to put this because it has to do with like when we make classes, which we'll do later. Uh, but it's so important that I wanted to go ahead and make sure to push it to the front as well. So we're going to keep working inside uh, the variables area. Uh, so we're going to be working in variables.h and variables.m. Uh, and we're actually going to start off by working in variables.h. Uh, and the reason for that is because we're going to declare these properties inside an interface. Uh, it actually turns out that you could declare properties inside an interface file, which is in the .m file, uh, to kind of make them private. Uh, but we're, we're just getting started here. We're going to put them in the .h file. It's the easiest way to do it. So the way properties work is I'm just inside the interface file, and I say at property. Uh, the next thing you add to this property is you add some qualifiers that determine how it behaves. One qualifier that you're going to see a lot is non-atomic. Non-atomic means uh, don't worry about thread safety. Just make this variable as fast and efficient as you possibly can. So that's one thing you're going to see in properties all the time. To be honest, I kind of wish that Apple had made the default uh, be non-atomic. To be honest, 100% of the variables that I use in this class are going to always be non-atomic, so that's just kind of there. Uh, the next is a keyword uh, that's usually either strong uh, or weak, uh, or there's another one called copy. Uh, strong and weak have to do with reference counting, which is if you've done a lot of like iOS programming back in the day, you cared about this a lot. Uh, but strong says, I am the one responsible for this property, which is the one you want most of the time. And weak says, I'm just keeping a pointer to it. Somebody else is, is managing this thing. Uh, so we're going to say strong. Uh, and then next up is what type of um, you know variable is it? So this one's going to be an object. It's going to be an ns number. So I'm going to say ns number star. And I'm just going to call it my number. Uh, that looks great. Uh, just to kind of make another one, just to kind of get used to properties. If we wanted to make a one that was a copy, uh, I'll make an ns string and I'll call it uh, my string. That sounds lovely. To be honest, copy what it does is if somebody like sets this parameter, it just makes an independent copy of it. Uh, I use copy a lot on ns strings and then pretty much nothing else. So if it's a string, I say copy. Anything else, I say strong. These are both objects, uh, and that's great. Uh, but you can actually use properties for things that are not objects as well, so for things that are primitives. Uh, so if you just had an int, uh, you can make a property for it as well. The one difference is, since it's a primitive, uh, you don't have to worry about memory management or automatic reference counting. So you don't say any words in terms of weak or strong or copy. Uh, you just say non-atomic, and that's the only one you need. So these three variables are actually going to be instance variables on the class. Uh, just because we're going to be making an instance of this class, uh, I also want to make an instance method. Uh, I'll just call mine example instance method because I didn't really feel like thinking of a good name. Uh, this is in the header file, so if somebody wanted to call this from some other class, that'd be fine. Uh, but I did want to go ahead and make an instance method. I mean, we'll talk about that when we get to classes, uh, but just so it's a place where I could deal with these properties. Because the problem is, is that the class method is, is for the class itself, and it doesn't have instance variables, so it doesn't have these properties. So I needed to make an instance method. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that instance method, uh, and I'm going to paste it below uh, my run function over in the, the .m file. right? So I've got my run fun function, uh, which is a class method, because it's got the plus. Uh, and then this is an instance method, which starts with a minus or a hyphen. And then inside my instance method, I've actually got access to all these different properties. Uh, and you can set them by saying things like self dot uh, my number uh, equals, uh, and I'll use the shortcut uh, at in front of the number to make it into an object. Uh, you can also do things like my string, uh, and you can set it to anything you want. Uh, I'll just say it's my string, so it's mine. Uh, and then self.myInt uh, works just like the others, 
Uh, the only difference is uh, that you don't need uh, the at symbol because it is actually a primitive. Now note these objects are actually public. Somebody else could use them as well. If that really bothers you, uh, you can actually make an internal uh, interface area. Uh, and the way it works is you just say uh, variables, uh, but since it's internal, it's actually what's called a category, uh, and you can give it a category name if you want. A category is just like a Swift extension. Uh, there's more details here than you really have to learn. Uh, and if you want to, you could actually give it a name uh, if you wanted as well, uh, or you could leave it blank. But the idea is that this is another interface. Uh, it's a place where I could add more things. Uh, so let's just say I wanted to add another uh, int variable. I'll just call it my internal int. Uh, I could actually add another property here that the outside world doesn't know about. Right? So I can only use this one uh, inside this file. Uh, since I currently am inside this file, uh, I can say my internal int uh, and I can set it just fine. A little bit later we'll go over to the view controller and we'll see that we can't set it from there. Right? If you want to actually see these things in logs, uh, you'll have to actually uh, do some work to, to call them and print them. Uh, so inside the, uh, the run method, I'm just going to go ahead and create uh, an object uh, of type variables. Admittedly, that class name isn't a, isn't a great name. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and make an instance object uh, of the uh, variables type. So I'm going to alloc init it. Um, and you get an alloc init for free uh, from your super class. So we didn't write that init method. We just get it for free. Uh, and then on the instance object, uh, I could call my example instance method. Uh, remembering from what we learned last time that the way you call functions is with a space uh, and then you put brackets around it. Uh, and then we could print out these different things, right? So if we wanted to print out, I just pasted it in here because I didn't want to have to type it. Um, if I wanted to print out my number, my string, and my int, uh, I could do that uh, pretty easily. Uh, and you can see it prints out down below here my seven, uh, the word mine, uh, and then the number eight. And since these are properties, uh, you actually get uh, setters for all of them. I mean, essentially for free, right? So I could say instance object dot my number uh, is equal to, you know, I could change it to say 10. Uh, I could change my string, of course. Uh, I could say, you know, we share. Uh, <clears throat> and then I could actually change uh, my internal number uh, or my public number. I could change them both, right? Because I'm inside the class. Uh, so I have access to that. Uh, heck, I'll just make it 11. And then I'll just print the same thing that I printed last time, uh, and I'll run it again. Uh, so you should be able to see it says uh, 7 and mine and 8, and then it says 10, we share, and 11. Uh, so you can see that those things have been modified. Uh, just to kind of prove the uh, internal external thing, uh, you could go to an external file. So here I'm over in uh, viewcontroller.m. And if I wanted to, I could actually make a, a variable here. So I'll just call it variables, I'll just call it v. Um, and I, I make it the same way as I did before. So I'll say variables alloc init. Uh, <laughs> you get pretty used to that one. Um, and I could do things like I could just set on it uh, my number, uh, and that would be fine. Uh, so I could just set its value. Uh, but you'll notice that if I tried to get my internal int, uh, it's not there. You could type it. Um, but it, it would it would give you a compiler warning and say, hey, I can't I can't do that, right? Um, so there's really no good way to set it. Ah, uh, what the heck? I'll I'll type it. So if you typed it there, it just says, uh, you know, hey, I don't know what you're talking about, uh, and that's just because it's internal only. If you did want to print it out, you can copy from what you did before. But over here, I did change the name to be just V, uh, and so that actually would print out just fine. So it'll print out the the things that it did before, uh, and then here you see it prints out the twelve. I didn't set my string, so it's just null. Uh, and then my int got zero because properties uh, make sure that they're zero, which is kind of nice. Uh, so that's properties. Uh, to be honest, we could have talked about that when we got to classes, uh, but it's pretty useful uh, and it is related to variables. Uh, so I decided to sneak it in now. All right, so that's kind of your playground about variables. Uh, we'll see you next time.